Hi everyone, my name is Haley Powers Thornton Kennedy. It's a really long name, so I just go by Haley Powers online. I am an illustrator and an educator in Baltimore, Maryland, and today we are in my studio. Um, so illustrator and educator, what does that mean? Illustrator, I draw for a living, which is really cool, and I'm really lucky to do it, and I love making imagery that is narrative and colorful and bold, um, and I like to teach others what I know, so that's where educator comes in. Um, I do workshops like this, but then I also teach undergrad education at Maryland Institute College of Art, um, so I teach in the illustration department, and I love to not only keep learning new things, but then pass on what I know. So that's what I'm going to be doing today with y'all. We are going to talk about GIFs. We're going to talk about simple animation tools and looping animation with limited frames. What is that? That's a GIF. We use GIFs a lot these days to um, communicate and to, you know, add a little bit of um, motion and a little bit of excitement to the way that we interact um, through chat and through lots of different uh, means of, of messaging each other. And so um, because it's such a big part of the way that we communicate now, I think it'd be really cool to look at how those images are made and make our own. So let's get started by talking a little bit about just the background behind frame animation and GIFs. Not tons of slides, but just a little bit to give us some information. And then we'll do a warm up together or two. We'll see. All right, cool. Okay, so let's talk about short looping GIFs and making things move. We talk, let's talk about making uh, things wiggle and, and loop, all right? So first we're gonna go over what's a GIF, what is it? Then we're gonna talk about animating with frames and then we're gonna do a morph GIF activity, okay? Sounds pretty fun, let's get to it. All right, so what is a GIF? A GIF is a short looping animation that appears on the web and on our mobile devices. We use GIFs a lot to tell people how we're feeling and um, to do a reaction to something. This is a GIF of me saying, wow, back when my hair was short. So it's just a really um, quick animated image that gets uh, an idea of oftentimes an emotion across. Um, as our means of communication becomes more visual, I said this before, through the use of emojis, through these GIFs and these stickers that we're using, um, these tools have become this means of expressing complex emotions in simple images, right? So without saying, wow, that was really funny and it surprised me, you can have a GIF of someone looking surprised, right? And uh, really enjoying something and then it gets that complex uh, emotion through. So we're using images more and more to take the place of sometimes um, complex wording or thoughts. So full animations, things like, you know, Disney animations, full, full uh, movies or TV shows like Steven Universe can be really long and complicated. And then the process to make those is actually very complicated. But GIFs rely on far fewer frames, making them really easy to create and share, right? So um, we're just cr trying to create a simple motion. For example, legs moving on a bicycle, right? This, this is a really you know, a good example of a looping GIF because something continues to happen over and over and over again um, that shows us this, this one motion, this repetitive task, right, that's being accomplished. And it's only a few frames. So frames, what are we talking about? What's a frame? Any animated image is made up of a sequence of still images with slight variations between them that when played or flipped through, make the image appear to be moving. So each of these single images is a frame. What does that mean, right? So frame animation is actually just a lot of still images. And because the images are being played very quickly in front of you, it's tricking your brain into thinking that you're looking at motion, right? Which is kind of crazy, right? So the reason why, um, you want to make sure that the variations between each image are very slight is because it creates that uh, effect on your brain of thinking that you know one moves to the other very quickly if you had you know far fewer frames only two frames of like someone jumping up and down and you have them on the ground and then all of a sudden you have them very high your brain can make that uh assumption wait 
there isn't there supposed to be something in the middle? So that's why we have multiple frames to show that movement uh, moving upwards or onwards. So this is a very famous um, a set of photographs. This was uh, by Edward Moybridge, and what he was doing was he was um, one of the pioneers of studying motion through photography, and so he was capturing moving uh, objects, moving people, and moving horses um, with his photography in quick succession to try and capture this motion. And then when played through, we get, we get an animation, we get a moving image of, of that motion. And so he was able to study motion in that way. So GIFs being simpler and smaller animated images than like a long animation that we were talking about before, um, often use fewer frames than traditional animation. This is to reduce the size of your file oftentimes and keep things simple. So when you're thinking about making a GIF or when you're thinking about making, you know, just a quick animation for yourself, Think about re simple repeating motions that you can produce without using lots of frames. So this is a very smooth animation, right, that we're looking at right now. And honestly, it's only about 16 frames. Not very many frames, not very many changes in those images. You can make uh, a GIF with even fewer. You can make a GIF with only three frames and have them repeat. There's lots of different ways to make a GIF. So we're going to make our own GIF starting now. So we're gonna do a demo, um, it's called Morph GIFs. And to get the idea of using frames and showing movement, we're gonna do this little warm up. I want you to get out paper, pen, and a light box. Now, I know that not everybody has a light box on hand. I have one in my studio because I have a studio. Um, but if you don't have a light box, you can use a bright window, right? So you're just something to give you um, backlighting. A bright window, a tablet screen, or a phone screen to provide backlighting so you can see through two pieces of paper at once. So I want you to choose, we're over on the pink side now, I want you to choose one object and animal from each column and write them down on a scratch piece of paper. Or you can choose two objects and animals of your own. It's up to you. These are just the things that were on my mind. So I'm going to be choosing, I've done this one before, um, coffee and a sheep. All right, and so we're gonna make a morphing GIF with these two words. Now, to compile your morphing GIF, you can use Photoshop, which is what I'm going to be using, or you can use a phone app like Stop Motion Studio, it's free, um, to record your frames and to get that animation to occur. I'm going to be showing you how it works on Photoshop, but the same ideas apply to these other apps as well. And so the same ideas of using frame animation will apply no matter what kind of tools you're using to compile the images together. So follow along and we're gonna make something cool like this. Okay, so now we're going to um, do a fun morph uh, GIF exercise. You should have some paper. I've cut this so that um, it's a little bit easier for me to work with. Um, you should have a chonky pen. Um, I've got like a thick tip pen that will be fun to use. Um, and you should have your words. So my words are boop, coffee and cheap. All right. Let's go. All right. So um, we are going to start off with coffee. So I'm just going to draw some coffee. Just a really simple little guy. My coffee is happy because I'm happy because I'm drinking coffee. All right, I don't want to make the drawing too complicated. I want to make it sure that um, it's easy to reproduce and I'm not going to get tired trying to reproduce it. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple. It's a really good idea when you're just starting out making GIFs um, and uh, little animated images to keep your illustrations more simple than you would do otherwise, um, just because it'll allow you to, I don't know, make make your um, illustrations a little bit more effective. All right, so I have my happy coffee here, all right? And so now I'm gonna draw, that's where it starts, coffee. And now I'm gonna draw the very end. So now I'm gonna draw a sheep. So 
My sheep has cute ears. I think my sheep is nervous. Nervous sheep. And I'm gonna make it really fluffy. <laughs> Does anybody else laugh at their own illustrations sometimes? Sometimes if I make something like really goofy, that's its tail. These are its little legs. You know, sometimes I just look at the things that I draw, I'm like, that's ridiculous. And it makes me laugh. All right, I think I'm gonna color in its little legs. Yeah. Yeah, little Baba. Well, black leg cheap. All right, so I have two simple illustrations to work with. And um, this will be my very last frame. And this will be my very first frame. And so we are going to make um, an animation together that goes from this to this, all right? So how do we do that? That seems, that seems hard. I'm gonna give it a little black ear too. Black ear, a little, little smile. All right, that's my sheep. He looks kind of goofy. I like him though. Boop, boop, okay. All right, so how do we do this? How do we get something? To go from here to here. Um, well, one of the great things about um, doing something like this is it can get from one to the other in almost any way. But what I like to do is I like to put one over the other and find out what my middle frame is going to be. All right. So um, these two are my um, first key images and to make my third key image. So key images are basically these like stepping stones that allow you to get from like one image to the other, one frame to the other as you're moving along. To get my next key image, I'm going to turn on my light box. So a little bit of a flash, watch your eyes. All right, there we go. Okay, so when I turn my light box on, and I put my coffee over my sheep, right? I can see kind of, you know, where these two might meet. So I'm gonna put a third piece of paper to get my third key image. I'm gonna put over the two, and hopefully you can see it. And I'm gonna try and draw a shape that's in between these two shapes. So I want my coffee to turn into the sheep, all right? So we're starting with coffee and we're ending with sheep. So my coffee shape kind of like, let's find a shape that's like in between these two. So, and it's okay if it's like really weird. <laughs> I think you should expect it to be. Uh, okay. And then I feel like it needs to ha start having legs. Yep, yep, all right. Okay. And then maybe this eye, maybe this turns into this. Right, so it's really just like kind of making it up as you go along. These eyes get smaller, this eye gets bigger. Maybe this line starts to disappear, all right? So you might be saying like, what is happening here? What is she doing? I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how to make like the coffee image smaller and kind of start turning into this, this sheep image, all right? So when I have my key images set out, it starts with happy cup of coffee, and then it turns into, whoa, that weird thing, and then it's gonna be a sheep, okay? So I'm gonna put these over here. Now, with all of those right now, that doesn't make an animation, and so now I need another frame in between the coffee and the terrifying shape, all right? So we're gonna just keep on doing this where we, try to create something that's in between the two. So I want this coffee to start to look more like this terrifying shape. And we're working back and forth here. So 
So this coffee looks like this terrifying shape. And now I'm gonna keep on doing this and uh, I might speed up the motion a little bit and stop talking. All right. Okay, so we now have a, um, over here, can't really see because my light box is on. I'll turn off my light box really quick. All right, so over here we now have a animation going on with coffee cup that turns into a horrifying thing that then starts to turn into a sheep. Now, it's really important to know like when you're putting pieces of paper over each other, which direction you're going in, right? And so basically I'm like, okay, so I have this large shape of black here. I wanna start making it a little bit smaller and turning it closer into an ear, right? Um, I kind of messed up with that, with making these eyes actually more prominent here. And so I might make them a little bit more prominent here and then here and then here they're the same and then they go away. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think actually I'm going to label these one, two, three, four, and five. And so this would be a five frame animation. And so I think that that's pretty good for our for a demo for a GIF right now. Um, but one thing that I really like to do, and I would re definitely recommend for making any GIF, is um, drawing the first and last image another time, maybe even twice. Because what's nice is um, when a GIF goes through a process of movement, it's nice to have a moment of stasis on one side and then the other, right? So it's a coffee cup for one 1,000, and then it moves, and then it's a sheep for one 1000, right? And so this will make more sense when it's all in motion, but um, it's nice to have more than one frame for uh, the coffee cup and more than one frame for the sheep because it lets the eye kind of rest, all right? So what I like to do is instead of just making this a very still image for much longer than the rest of the animation, I like to draw it two more times. I do that because then it will have like a nice organic wiggle in animation that's called a boil. All right, so we're gonna draw the coffee cup and the sheep about two more times. I'm gonna do it with a light box on. So again, watch your eyes. Um, and then those will also just be named one and five because it doesn't really matter what order they go in. All right, so light box on, pew. All right, let's draw this sheep again. Aw, oh, it's so cute. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of getting the shape in there. So yeah, so those are all of the different frames and what I was saying about the ones on the end and the one in the very middle, those are your key frames, all right? So um, when you're planning out your motion with your other GIFs, it's important to know what that motion is going to be and know what your key frames are going to be. So if your um, motion is all planned out and you're having someone waving, right? You have somebody waving and you realize that you have um, where the wave begins on one side and then you have it on the end that hand in the middle where it goes from the one to the end that hand in the middle is your third keyframe all right and so you want to make sure that you know exactly where that is so that 
you can make it into a fluid motion. If you find that your um, GIF feels really choppy, you might just need to put like an extra frame or two in there. That will really help. Okay. Wow, sheep. All right, this is another five. Again, I'm calling them the same because it's like just two of the same image. And we do a third one. So now we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frame animation. We have three of our um, coffee cups in stasis. They're going to boil. They're going to wiggle a little bit. We have three of our final extremely cute little sheep. Again, they're going to like wiggle a little bit. And then we have the interior motion. Now, if you find that you want to keep going with this and make more kind of frames in between these, these elements, Go for it. That's totally up to you. I'm just going to go with nine right now because for the purpose of keeping this going, I think that that's a smart idea. Um, but yeah, you can keep on, you know, finding the, um, the moments in between these and trying to get them to look even more similar to have like a really fluid animation. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to scan all of these right now and then bring them over to Photoshop and show you how to turn them into an animation. Now there are other animating, um, uh, resources out there if you don't have Photoshop. If you know of any, please put them in the comments. I'll do some research and put them in the comments as well. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so here I am. I'm in Photoshop um, and I have already scanned in all of my uh, frames and actually I put them all all of my frames I've scanned them in and I've turned them all into layers on Photoshop on my right hand side of my screen You can see that and I've also labeled them. I really like labeling things. Maybe it's because I'm a Virgo Maybe it's because it's just a good way to do it But I think that labeling um, your frames will really help you to stay organized Especially when you have so many layers, you know that you're working with and they're all shifting all right, so I have each one in here. I've cleaned them up a little bit. I uh, raised the contrast so that these are like really crisp black and white images. Um, and yeah, and I put them all in order. Now, one thing about bringing analog um, and like drawings into, into Photoshop and then layering them to animate them, you want them to line up pretty easily. So one way to do that, and I think probably the easiest way to do that, is to um, basically do like a fake onion skinning technique. Onion skins were used by animators pretty long time ago. I mean, they might still be used, but literal onion skins were used in order to like make tracing paper, right? To see um, like the, the slight differentiation between movement. So you, we can do that by um, turning on two of these layers and um, putting them on multiply. So that's over here. So keep watching my screen. Um, so I'm gonna go over into these um, blending modes right here in multiply. And right now they're all lined up. So actually I'm gonna move this one so that you can see exactly right what I'm talking about. All right, so right now we have two images and they're offset. Um, I'm gonna make one of them, one A is like gonna be my base, all right? So it's really important to choose like one base uh, frame as like your base image and exactly where you want it to be because everything will line up from there. All right, so 1A is my base image and I'm gonna lower the opacity of it. Um, no, actually I moved 1A, there you go. Um, I'm gonna lower the opacity so that it is um, a little bit lighter, right? And then I'll take 1B 
And I'm actually, instead of just using the, the tool to, um, to move it, the move tool, which is over here, V, um, I'm actually gonna take one B and I'm gonna press Command T, which is transform. All right, so, so funny. I know all of these uh, shortcuts, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna go to Command T and transform, and then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna move it right on top. All right, so that's if everything was based off of this image. I previously had everything where I wanted it to go, so I'm gonna go over here. All right, so we have these little changes between things. All right, so now we have all of these frames in their own individual layers. They're all lined up, right? So um, what I'm wanting to do now is I'm gonna go up into Windows and I'm gonna open Timeline. So Timeline is our um, ticket to animating in, in Photoshop. So we're gonna open Timeline down here. All right, and um, you might see Create Frame Animation, you might see Create Video Timeline. And we're gonna do frame animations for this lecture, so we're gonna create frame animation. All right, and then over here we can say, there you go, make frames from layers. Sorry, that took a second. Um, make frames from layers. And so we wanna say that. And so two, kind of out of order. That's okay. And we're trying to background on for all of these. So let's say I want to, so you can see where I cleaned some stuff up. I like erased some um, edges and stuff like that. And so because of uh, that, all of these, you know, have transparent backgrounds. Um, in order to turn like the white background on for all of these, I'm going to select them all. So I selected them all by pressing shift and selecting all of them and then press the background, right? And so now the background is on for all of them. And this frame is just the background frame, and so I'm going to delete it. You delete it down here, boop, yes. All right, so now we have, well, actually now it's going backwards from uh, sheep to, to coffee, but that's fine. Whoop, whoop, all right, pretty cool. The thing is though, it then jumps from being the coffee all the way back to the sheep. All right, so I'm gonna add some frames um, to make it go back the other way and make it loop. So I'm going to create a new frame and I'm going to select, we've already gone through the coffee, so coffee, coffee there. All right, and this is the first frame, so I don't want to repeat it again. Let's see what happens when we go through. Oh my gosh, look, it transforms. Super cool. All right, so now I have this looping frame animation and very similar to, um, I didn't mean for this to happen, the, the Moybridge um, running horse. This is 16 frames. That one was 16 frames, right? I think so. Um, anyway, so it moves throughout. Um, this is a really fun way to like make a GIF, um, and I'm going to show you a couple cool little things. That was just my cat. Um, so the reason why it's looping is because right here it says forever, all right? You want to make sure that forever is always ticked, all right? Um, once means that it'll just play through once, and that's boring. <laughs> that's not as good. So let's say forever, right? And let's say that you actually, um, this is too fast. You export this and it feels too jittery and too quick. Um, you can make the seconds longer. So you can do it frame by frame, or again, you can choose all of the frames and choose to have them a little bit longer. Again, I, I actually don't think that um, it works to have too much of a delay between them. I can actually just show you. So if we have like a 0.5 second delay, it becomes really choppy and slow, right? You see each image for too long and that idea of it being like um, this fluid motion is 
broken <laughs> because we we consider each image individually. When you see each image um, for a less amount of time, then uh, you your brain starts to think of it as a moving image, right? So you're tricking your own brain. So five too long, too long. Choose all of them. Zero too fast. So we're just gonna do point one second. And I think that's kind of nice. I like that one. Yeah. So it's up to you how quickly you want your frame rate to be. Um, but for the purpose of this one, I think that point one works pretty well. All right. So if you don't have a scanner and you can't um, bring this all into Photoshop right now um, via, you know, from analog tools, you can do this right on Photoshop. Um, so you can just start from Photoshop and you know, do it layer by layer, start by drawing um, a uh, sheep and then draw a coffee cup and then put the layers on top of each other on multiply and find something in the middle, right? So um, you can totally do this exercise on Photoshop. All right, cool. Um, here we have it, a little guy, it's so cute. Now when we're exporting this so that we can see it as a GIF, we want to go over to File, Export, and Save for Web. Now when we do this, move it on my face, I'm going to choose GIF. Um, and you can lower the quality of it, it doesn't have to be huge. So I'm going to make sure that this, see this is huge right now. Um, I'm going to make my image size something like, I don't know, 800. Um, looping, make sure it's on forever. And then... I don't know why it's not working. We'll see. Usually there's a preview right here. And so this might not work for some unforeseen reason. So let's, let's see. Maybe I have it too big. Oh, nope. So right now I'm previewing it in my browser. And there it is, and it works. Okay, great. All right, so we're back in Photoshop now. Um, oh, and it's appearing, great. Um, and all right, back to 800. And don't press save. Wait, no, it's press save. Don't press done. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one I almost pressed. Because if you press done, I think that it just like goes away. So we want to save it, right? And we'll save it as morph gif. Hooray. Okay. And then save it to my desktop. Save. And if we go to my desktop, let's see my system preferences. And we click on morph gif hooray. There it is. See, now sometimes when you export it onto your desktop, it's actually a little bit quicker than it appears in Photoshop. Sometimes that just takes a little bit of tweaking. And so if I were to go back into this, I might actually bring it to like 0.2 seconds for each frame just to have it be a little bit slower. But for now, here we have it. A coffee cup becomes a sheep. Hooray! <laughs>